Well, there's a story today in Sydney of a woman who passed away. She died alone in her house in inner Sydney. She lay in the house for some eight years before she was discovered a couple of years ago. There was some publicity about this at the time, and now there is to be an investigation, a coroner's inquest into her passing, to examine why she lay there for all that time. And there is also now the legal ramifications, trying to establish when she died, and relatives who are seemingly uh, putting forward their claims for the ownership of the house and some of the other things that she's left behind. Now, there are obvious conclusions you can draw from that, but this once again brings into the frame the issue of people who are living alone, and there's a couple of things we should say. Often they're stereotyped as having died a lonely death, and the image is of somebody who lived alone and was very lonely and then dies. That's not necessarily the case. In fact, a lot of people like to live alone. They enjoy being alone. And increasingly, with the baby boomers ageing, there'll be people who will be living alone because their partners have died or they're separated. And in many cases, those people like to live alone. They like their independence and they, they shun anyone else wanting to help them because they are fiercely independent. And so there's a very difficult line that we have to be very careful in trying to draw on this issue because there are other people who, who do crave uh, companionship and do crave attention and need uh, help and who don't get it. This is a challenge for all of us as we have more and more people living alone, the people who need help and who indeed are lonely, the people who are independent and live alone and I think all of us within our families would know people who are fiercely independent and resist the notion of getting any help or any contact and the pride gets in the way and that's somewhere that we need to all look at pushing a little bit more. And then there's the question of neighbours and instrumentalities where you send bills to someone for some eight years for unpaid debts and someone should twig that there's some problem there and someone should have gone to investigate. So there's a whole range of issues here as more and more people will be living alone, more and more people will be living longer, but by definition it means we'll have a lot of people who'll be very frail, who'll be very independent, who've lived long lives, and in many, many cases they may not necessarily ask for help or attention because they don't want it, they may even resist it, but they do need it. So that's something we should all consider. Think about your own neighbourhood, look around, are there people who perhaps you could put a hand out and if they wave you away just press a little bit more because as they get older that assistance that they don't think they necessarily need might be needed at the very least. Call in on them occasionally and make sure they know there is someone there if they do want to reach out.